He looked at us and tell us that we are idiots. Then the vice president is an idiot. From the first of August, we we go to sleep. Them go to stand for streets. Who are these people who want to do protests? And that they would be stopped. We don't want a repeat of the NSAS protests in Nigeria. If this is not a stone violent, it is the Nigerian police, the Nigerian civil service, it is the army that causes it. The government is going to learn a bitter lesson about taking the people of Nigeria for granted. If you make it violent, we'll come out violently. No person has a monopoly of violence. Have you ever wondered why a government that ignores kidnapping prices, poor salaries, fuel price hike and widespread of hunger suddenly turns to town criers and gladiators of our time just by the mention of protest. In less than two weeks after Nigerians announced a protest, every level of government from traditional rulers to the presidency has rallied to stop it. We traditional rulers are not engaged. We are parents. We are closer to them. We are going to go back home and continue to engage them. This brings us to the question. Why are politicians so afraid of this protest? They claim protests never work, but is it actually true? Let's find out. I'm not going to follow this. I'm going to follow this. I'm going to follow this. I'm going to protest. Nothing like protest. Consider this. A politician who once supported and funded protests during Good Luck Jonathan's era now fears the very movement he once championed because he's now in power. Let them be out. Out. Is this a case of karma in action? In this video, we'll be exploring why those who dismiss protests are wrong and why politicians are truly terrified of this movement. Stay tuned to uncover the real reason behind their fear and don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's start this way, listen carefully to the end of this video. First of all, here is what you must note about the protests and the protesters. Freedom of speech is a fundamental right in any democracy, crucial alongside the right of life. In section 39 of one of the Nigerian constitutional guarantees this, stating every person shall be entitled to freedom of expression, including freedom to hold opinions and receive and impact ideas and information without interference. Additionally, section 83 of the Police Act 2020 requires the government to not only permit protest, but also ensure the security and protection of protesters. Having known this, what the law says about protest and the rights of the protesters, you may now wonder why the government of today are now afraid of it and sees it as a taboo. Talking about the aim of this planned protest of Nigerian on August 1st, 2024, one may wonder how it all started and the idea behind it. Just a month ago, Kenyans launched a protest against their government over increased taxes on essential goods, gaining traction on social media in Nigeria with the hashtag End Bar Governance. The Kenyan protest evolved into border demands for government reforms, resonating with Nigerians facing the worst cost of living crisis in nearly 30 years of being alive. They want to shadow what is happening in Kenya. It's violent. By June 2024, Nigeria's inflation rate hit at 4.19%, with food inflation exceeding 40%. The planned protest in Nigeria aims to address this economic hardship and demand substantial government reforms. This movement seeks to amplify the voices of those struggling under the weight of inflation and inadequate governance, hoping to spark real change and accountability. The end bad government protest set to August 1st, 2024 has become a significant point of concern for Nigerian politicians. This planned nationwide demonstration aims to address widespread of hardship and demand accountability and reform from the government. On the area of the government, politicians fearing the protest. To these elite politicians, these protests are labelled as unwarranted and politically motivated. For this reason, the Department of State Services claim it aims for regime change while the military warns of potential anarchy and the police suggest it could cover terrorist activities. They do not have a right to mobilize for anarchy and the unleashing of terror. These warnings are alarming, given the brutal repression of past protests like the NSAS crackdown in 2020, where security forces killed over 12 unarmed protesters. With this last experience of protests, we can tell how heartless these people are and what they are ready to do just to remain in power. The youth-led NSAS protests of 2020 show the power and impact of organized youth movements, and politicians are wary of a repeat or even larger mobilization this time around because it costs across being a youth, but just being a Nigerian. Both the younger, the elders will be on the street. And for this reason, it brings fears to the Nigerian elites. They are all afraid of losing control 
It's not that large-scale protests have the potential to disrupt daily life and lead to unrest. Nigerian politicians are concerned about the possibility of widespread of instability, which could undermine their authority and control. Previous protests have sometimes turned violence, leading to clashes with security forces and significant property damage, and further destabilizing the nation. And when situation reaches this stage where you can't control it again, that's where anarchy comes in, a state of lawlessness. Secondly, the politicians are afraid of fear of international attention. No doubt, the end back government protests will bring about international attention, putting additional pressure on Nigerian politicians. Global media coverage, supporting from international activities and statements from foreign government and organizations, highlighting the country's issues on wide world stage. This scrutiny can lead to diplomatic pressures and potential sanctions, which Nigerian leaders want to avoid by all means. Thirdly, these politicians have the fear of revolutionary accountability and reform. At this stage of this country, protesters are not just calling for an end to hardship but are demanding specific reforms, including anti-corruption measures, electoral reforms and improvement in governance. These demand strikes at the heart of entrenched political practices that have allowed many politicians to maintain power and wealth. Meeting these demands would require significant changes that threaten their interest. In case you don't know, as of 30th of July, the reports have it from Interpol that for every hour, about thousands of dollars is being sent out of Nigeria to foreign countries. Due to this heavy looting by the politicians, they are afraid of being accountable for every penny they spend. Fourthly, these politicians have the fear of potential political fallout. A successful protest movement could lead to political fallout, including the unseating of current leaders and shift in political powers in dynamics. Politicians are concerned about losing their position and influence. Giving an example of what happened in Burkina Faso, how the military took over and ended the bad governance. So these politicians are afraid of losing everything they never worked for. The funny thing here is, despite more than two weeks of prior notice to the governor of Nigeria before the protest begins, which is speculated to start on 1st of August 2024, the government of Nigeria haven't done anything reasonable to reduce this hardship. All they are ready to do is to borrow funds just to combat the protests from holding instead of tackling the issues why the people are coming out in the first place. It has been alleged that the government have been disbursing money to statesmen just to come and tell their people not to come out and protest. People will say that they've given him money. That's why he's talking this way. I am now. Go take your own. Me, I don't take my own. They have gone too extreme to the extent of pointing about 400 women who stands as anti-protesters who end up getting 1,500 and a hardship palliative. <laughs> that is crazy. This tells you how bad and evil these people can be. To wrap up this video, here is a letter to President Tinibu. Dear Bola Ahmed Tinibu, how long do you think Nigerians will keep on with these lies and deception? Nigeria is a country, not a company. Why do the federal government treat Nigerian citizens like refugees? Distributing rice is not the solution to Nigerian current state. Monthly electricity bills is more than the current minimum wage. An average man on the streets has no idea how he will feed his family. Businesses are collapsing, electricity is unstable, fuel prices are skyrocketing, and our youths are leaving Nigeria to other countries. Foreign investors are leaving Nigeria, and some companies are retrenching their staff due to lack of resources. Some of our men are indulging in all manner of crime just to keep up, while some ladies are doing the unspeakable just to survive. How can the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria choose to share rice in the middle of crisis instead of listening to the masses? How long do you intend to share this rice, sir? The citizens are demanding their rights. The last time I checked, rice was never included as the right of the citizens. Why throw a grain of rice to your citizen when the government can provide the citizens with good road, electricity without generator as a support power? Create jobs by giving farmers incentives to produce. Create an enabling environment that will attract foreign investors. Invest in our educational system, security, pay our civil servants and teachers, invest in our health system, and ETC. We need a Nigeria where bright men and women build and grow without being at the mercy of who they know 
and what they can offer, which is money. Nigerians need where they can cultivate their own grains and not where to pick up a cup of rice. Nigerians are humans and we are not animals. This protest is more than a call for change. It's a challenge to the very foundation of Nigerian political landscape. At this point, we have to draw the curtain. What's your take about this whole thing? Drop your comment. Do you think this can ever be achieved or not? Or is revolution the last option? Your opinion matters. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in our more intriguing and inspiring videos. Bye for now.